Donald Trump's new ride is about to arrive in Washington. Final tests are being made on an update to Cadillac 1, the president's official vehicle, better known as the Beast. The new Beast weighs in at 8 tons and has 8-inch thick steel doors that are sealed to block out chemical attacks. Just in case though, the limo is also fitted with an oxygen system. Armor-piercing bullets and even a 44 Magnum are no match for the Beast's bulletproof windshield and 5-inch thick military-grade bodywork. The underside of the Beast is reinforced with a steel plate to protect against roadside bombs, and the fuel tank is armor-plated to make it explosive-proof. Shotguns are kept on board the vehicle, but the only window that can open is the driver's, and that's only by 3 inches. So maybe there's a few secrets we don't know. The Beast also has Kevlar tires that run even if they're flat, and the vehicle is fitted with a tear gas cannon to disperse potential angry crowds. The Beast cost about 1.5 million US dollars to build and is part of a fleet of 12 vehicles designed to protect the president. President Trump's new ride was supposed to be ready for his inauguration in January, but for some reason it wasn't. However, the Beast is now just waiting final approval and should be ready to be deployed later this month. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Stay tuned for more stories about the president. What is inside the U.S. President's nuclear football? The mysterious nuclear football that travels around with the U.S. President is about to be handed over to President-elect Donald Trump. The nuclear football, formerly known as the Presidential Emergency Satchel, contains four things. A folder of instructions for the emergency broadcast system, a black book listing a menu of strike options, another book listing secure shelters for the President, and a card with authentication codes for the President to confirm his identity. It also allows the President to communicate with the Pentagon from any location. The briefcase is hand-carried by one of five military aides who have passed a special security investigation. The vetting process, known as Yankee White, requires the aide to be a U.S. citizen and possess unquestionable loyalty to the country. The individual, his or her family, or anyone the individual is closely linked to must also be absolutely devoid of any foreign influence. The officer carrying the football must always be within reach of the president. If the president decides to deploy nuclear weapons, he must use a special code on the card to verify his identity, which has to be confirmed by the Secretary of Defense. The Black Book contains a menu of nuclear strike options, allowing the president to choose to eliminate all of the country's enemies at once or only target individual nations. Once orders have been verified, the military issues the attack. The military may not veto the president's decision. Trump will be able to use the nuclear football at his discretion starting Inauguration Day, which is the first day a military aide tasked with carrying the package will begin to accompany the new president. Trump rails on the press over intelligence leaks. Donald Trump held a press conference on Thursday in which he claimed his administration is running like a fine-tuned machine and then spent the rest of his time denouncing the press. Trump was supposed to announce his new selection for the Department of Labor. Instead, he used the news conference to rail against intelligence leaks, explain why Mike Flynn resigned as National Security Advisor, and defend his immigration ban. To take attention off his alleged Russia ties, Trump decided to pounce on the media. Once again, Trump had CNN in his crosshairs. BBC was lucky enough to get some love from the president, too. Trump especially took issue with media outlets turning intelligence leaks into stories, citing pieces from the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. Trump said, The leaks are real, but the news is fake. Trump was referring to the information given to reporters that connected former National Security Advisor General Michael Flynn with phone calls to the Russian ambassador before Trump took office. Other reporters tried to ask Trump about the contacts his aides reportedly had with Russian intelligence officials. Naturally, he dismissed the stories as fake news. The disputed Dakota Access Pipeline is back on the agenda. U.S. President Donald Trump signed an executive action on Tuesday to advance the construction of the Dakota Access Pipeline, which was delayed through legal disputes and months of protests. The proposed Dakota Access Pipeline would stretch 1,172 miles through North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, and Illinois. 
The pipeline would be able to transport up to 470,000 barrels of crude oil a day from a vast oil reserve detected in the U.S. portion of the Bagan Shale oil fields. The pipeline is complete, except for the portion near the Standing Rock Sioux Tribes Reservation in North Dakota. The tribe has been protesting the construction of the pipeline, claiming it would put the reservation's water supply at risk of oil spills and harm sacred sites. Many oil and natural gas pipelines already exist in North Dakota, with many passing through the Missouri River. Dakota Access argues that the proposed pipeline would not pose risk to the water supply as it would be at a depth of at least 95 feet below the bottom of Lake Oahe and parallel to the existing northern border pipeline, which has been operating safely for 35 years and is only a few feet below the lake bed. Another controversial pipeline, the Keystone XL pipeline, was also given the green light by President Trump. The proposed pipeline would stretch nearly 1,200 miles across Montana, South Dakota, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. President Trump's hair loss medicine explained. U.S. President Donald Trump's doctor recently told the New York Times that the 70-year-old leader of the free world was taking the drug Propecia. But what exactly is it? Also known as finasteride, Propecia is a commonly used drug that treats hair loss in men, particularly male pattern baldness. This is a sex-linked characteristic inherited from the mother, whereby a bald patch gradually forms on top of the patient's head. Propecia treats this by inhibiting the production of DHT, a form of testosterone linked to baldness. The side effects of the drug reportedly mainly hamper the male libido and can result in decreased sex drive as well as erectile and ejaculation issues. If a patient stops taking the drug, hair loss returns. According to U.S. government information, male pattern baldness does not indicate a medical disorder, but may affect self-esteem or cause anxiety. Say hello to the first POTUS slash reality TV executive producer. You're fired? President-elect Donald Trump is keeping his executive producer credit and financial ties with the NBC reality show Celebrity Apprentice even after he takes the helm in Washington. Or is that in New York? NBC is getting ready to launch the new Celebrity Apprentice on January 2nd, with Arnold Schwarzenegger taking over as the show's boardroom judge. Arnie will replace Donald as the main character who decides the fates of the celebrity contestants. Trump's name will be listed in the credits of the NBC show, but it's unclear how much he's going to be compensated. But hey, it's not like being the president takes up that much time anyway. Trump should have plenty of downtime. What Trump should do is talk to NBC and come up with a whole new show idea. Presidential Apprentice has a nice ring to it. Who wouldn't want to see cabinet members and possible Supreme Court justices battle it out on reality TV? Kanye kicks it with Donald Trump. <laughs> After having a total meltdown on stage, followed by a stint at the hospital, Kanye West decided to dye his hair blonde, no doubt so that he and his new BFF Donald Trump would match. Yeezy dropped by Trump Tower to chill with the president-elect on Tuesday. Ye and Trump are brothers from another mother, sharing tons in common, like their love for Twitter. <laughs> Tanya tweeted that he met with Donald to discuss multicultural issues, saying it was important to have a direct line of communication if we truly want change. West said the two bosom buddies talked about a bunch of things, like bullying, supporting teachers, modernizing curriculums, and violence in Chi-Town. Trump then hopped into the tanning bed for a bit because he looked like an orange when he walked Ye out. The two then decided to strike a pose 
and go full Zoolander down in the lobby for the journalist and cameras before Kanye took off. The only unfortunate news about the meeting was that it looks like America will have to wait until 2024 for the West Wing.